Sarnage. Hello and welcome back to SnowRunner. I'm Lynx and a big welcome to Alaska in the dark. How uh, inhospitable is this actually? Let me just uh, change up the, uh, the time to morning here. And uh, good morning in Alaska, should I say. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a, a jump cut from where we were in the last video. We were um, just, you know, tidying up a few little mini tasks and opening up some roadways in Michigan. Um, but I thought, you know, I, I, this, this game is called SnowRunner, and I want to snow, show you some snow. So, here, snow, lots of it. Um, I'm not quite sure we're ready to be taking on a majority of tasks here in, uh, in Alaska. Um, it's just, um, it's tricky. It's really tricky conditions for, for this level of the game. But I'm not going to do anything too difficult. I'm just going to do a few little easy contracts uh, and do a little bit of exploration. Um, primarily what I want to do is open up a few roadways here because there is some really good vehicles that you can find here in Alaska and having access to them would really make uh, Michigan go a little bit easier um, than, uh, than it would otherwise. So we are here in Northport, Alaska as you can see, it's a it's a reasonably big map. There's a fair few watchtowers to to get, uh, and if I show you the global map, there's actually four areas to Alaska, just like there's four areas here to uh, to Michigan. Um, yeah, four four areas in Russia and two in Kola Peninsula and two in Yukon so far. Um, but we're focusing here on Alaska for now, and what we're going to do is we're going to do this little contract here. Uh, nope, this one here. Pipeline construction. We've already got it tracked, and we just need to take a couple of service spare parts from the service hub down the road and deliver them up to the pipeline here. That's going to allow us to actually get through to this side of the map. Uh, what we're also going to do is we're going to take the Khan over here uh, for a little spin as well. Uh, I mentioned in one of my previous videos I didn't really like the Khan that much, it's a little bit bouncy. Um, but being a DLC vehicle it does have some slightly different um, upgrades already on it and it actually comes standard with mud tires. Now here in Alaska that's immensely useful because there is a lot of mud here and a lot of deep snow. So we're going to use the Khan briefly just to kind of unlock a couple of watch, watch towers um, but most of the time we're going to be over in our Fleet Star here uh, and I'm just going to power this up and we're going to Take a little trundle down the road to get some service spare parts and deliver them to the pipeline. Now, it's not going to be as easy as that because if you can see that sheen on the road, that's because it's iced. There's a lot of ice in Alaska, a lot of ice, and you will find yourself just sliding around all over the place if you don't have... Uh, the chain tires upgrade, which we don't, but I'm hoping that it's not going to cause too much of a problem um, for these simple jobs. Um, the reason I'm doing this is, like I said, there's actually a couple of really good vehicles that you can find here in Alaska. Um, that aren't too difficult to get to um, and if we can get to them 
then uh, they'll they'll serve as well in future tasks. One in particular, I'm not going to spoil which ones they are, um, but yeah, we there's there's a couple of really good truck options that we can pick up here in Alaska. They're not the best trucks in the game by any means, but they're very useful in their own way. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's the plan. That's the plan for um, probably the next few videos. I'm going to be here in Alaska, just you know, trying to potter around as best I can, keeping it simple, but uh, also. You know, just uh, trying to do some meaningful, meaningful process, progress. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That was a nice patch. Um, you will just notice the rear of the truck just swinging out. Just quite, uh, quite dramatically at some points. And that's uh, that's the black ice patches that we'll run into. Come on, little fleet star. Chug on through. Chug on through. There we go. No problem. See, the fleet star's good for everything. Pipeline's coming up just here. Now let's swing around and drop off these spare parts. Boom! And there we are. Right, so that's opened up a whole load of other tasks for us. Um, I'm actually quite sure. Oh, we're not going to do that one just yet. Um, so as you can see, that really did just open up a great deal of... Uh, let me just turn the engine off here so we're not wasting fuel. Um, what we really want to do, though, is open up a couple of these watchtowers so that we can actually see what we're doing. Specifically, this one right here, because that one covers quite a lot of the map there. But I also want to get this one down here and this one here. This one up here, it's not as important right now. Um, but that is where the car is going to come in useful. So we're just going to stop tracking. Where is it? Containers in the river. Did anyone spot that? Oh, it was a task. That's right. Stop tracking. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to head down to this road here and take a right up to that watchtower. So as you can see the Khan here, um, for a start, <laughs> there's a, an example of how much you will slide around uh, without chain tyres. But the car is, um, it's gone through some changes since it first got released as a DLC vehicle. Initially it had, um, I believe it was like an 80 litre fuel tank and it absolutely dominated the early game. It was a, it was pretty much a no brainer to, to use the car in, in all circumstances. And there was a little bit of a hoo-ha with regards to it because um, a few people claimed that it was uh, a pretty obvious case of pay to win. Um, but in all actuality, I actually bought the standard version of the game before I upgraded to the season pass later on. Uh, so I didn't have access to the Khan for pretty much most of Michigan and the start of Alaska and I had no problem you know I mean sure the Khan would have been easier 
but it certainly wasn't a necessity to get around. You can easily uh, do the early game with the with the normal scout vehicles that you have access to. Uh, you've just got to be a little bit more careful. Um, but yeah, but even so, a lot of people said that the the Khan was just easy game, shall we say? So uh, they actually nerfed the Khan. They reduced the fuel tank to forty liters. Um, and it uh, it became slightly less useful because it wasn't quite as uh, solo warrior as uh, as it once was, you know. So yeah, little bit of a uh, little bit of a nerf to the Khan, but overall it was still fine, you know. Like I said, I just didn't like it as much uh, simply because it was a bit bouncy. Now. What I'm actually going to do here, I think, is rather than try and drive out the next one immediately, I am going to recover to the garage and head up this way and use this road here. Because as you can see, there's this huge pipeline here that cuts across the map, and it pr basically means you can't get over that pipeline unless you use this road. There are a few places where you can kind of slip through. Um, but this particular road here is incredibly boggy, so it's not uh, uh, I, I wouldn't advise using it too much um, besides it me uh, allows me to just re top off the the Khan's fuel tank as well um, so that I've got all of the available fuel for the journey ahead. There we go, Khan just wrecking face with its huge mud tires. Um, once you get a few upgrades and once you level up a little bit, the Scout 800 that we picked up can fit tyres of a similar kind of size to this one, uh, to the Khan here, and uh, it does make it a very close rival of the Khan. In fact, in my view it makes it slightly better because uh, the Scout has a few extra little upgrades that you can put on it and also has a much bigger fuel tank. So once you have those upgrades, I would say the Scout 800 is actually better than the Khan. Um, but these chunky mud tires do give the Khan a little bit of an edge earlier on in the game. So we're going to head this way next. Uh, and just start progressing towards the middle of the map. Uh, yep, yeah, just down here. Oh, yeah, see, really muddy down here. But the Khan's just kind of slicing through without too much problem. Just got to be careful because the engine in the Khan um, is incredibly powerful. You can eat it's. The reason it keeps sliding when I come to, stu to a stop is because the engine is so powerful that uh, it just has so much momentum behind it for such a little vehicle. Uh, so you just got to be careful that you don't overcook it. Other than that, it is a good little vehicle, just the fuel tank is leaves a little bit to de be desired these days, which is unfortunate. Whoop. There you go, you see. Just almost overcooked it. But we're all good. Right, I'm just going to check the map again, make sure I'm going the right way. Uh, oh yes, actually, I think if we go... Go. Can we go that way actually? Is that a shortcut? 
Actually, I think that's a little shortcut. I'm going to go this way. Down here, because you can see the uh, the track there. I wouldn't recommend this in a bigger vehicle, because it'll probably dig in. But in the car, not bad at all. I'm uh, just going to cut through here. And carry on round. See a bit thicker snow here. Uh, our other scout vehicles would struggle a little bit with this kind of condition. But the Khan, not too bad at all. Oop, I'll avoid that tree. And this task here is actually one that we want to do whilst we've got the Khan in this general area. So this is Drowned Hummer and we actually get the vehicle from it and the Humvee is really good. So we want to just, we want to pull this out of here for now. I'm not going to take it the rest of the way just yet, but I'm just going to leave it there for the time being. And what we're going to do is, oop, <laughs> apart from crashing into it, there's our watchtower. And we're going to use this little fjord crossing here um, just to cut across this lake a little bit. Now, you've got to be careful. There's a few of these kind of stone crossings in the game. And you've just got to take them slowly because they can be a little bit... Uh, um, it can be a little bit tricky just sometimes to see exactly where you're going with them Ooh, and the one thing you don't want to do is tip over whilst you're on one of them because uh, remember having this much trouble previously. So I'm going to try going up this little bit here. Come on little Khan, I know you can do it. It's a bit tricky, come on. I know you can do this. I think when I previously used this, I uh, came in from the other direction, so... Oh, come on now. This is getting silly. Come on, Khan. Get yourself up. Just pull. Pull, little Khan. Yeah, there we go. See, you just gotta take things one little step at a time. And just pull yourself across. There we go. Okay, so. I'm going to refuel, oh, no, not recover. That would be a terrible mistake. I'm gonna refuel from this trailer here. And then I'm gonna head around here. Because you may have noticed, the more eagle-eyed viewer, is that there is an upgrade on this side of the pipeline. And it's easy enough to get to, you've just gotta work your way around these rocks here without tipping over or flooding your engine and there we go that is a new engine for a couple of trucks there that we don't yet own I say yet because we will at some point in the future own these particular trucks come on Khan come on now Come on, up the hill, 
Up, up, up. There we go. So, we're going to head round to that watchtower, grab the watchtower, and then we're going to head back this way and uh, and drag that Hummer back to base. here and just head across this little fjordy bit here and just head over here to the watchtower Pretty snow covered view. So that opens up a very large section of the map here. So we've got lots of tasks, trailer stores, factories, sawmill, um, various other things around here. So the plan now is we're going to head back here, top up the, the car once again, grab the Hummer drag it out over here, grab that upgrade on the way, and then drag the Hummer back to the garage, uh, which is where we want to go, as you can see there. So I'm just going to track that, and we are going to head back. We uncovered so much, so many objectives and uh, and things that the game is still telling me about them. <laughs> oh, come on, Khan, stop that now! Suddenly started pulling to the left quite a bit, and it's most disconcerting when that happens, especially when you're trying to be accurate. Anyway, back here at the oil. Uh, oil Derrick Place. Right. Just going to refuel again. Boom. There we go. Back to 40 litres. And um, back across our little water bridge there. Come on camera, behave yourself. Camera has a rather irritating habit of uh, jumping around sometimes when you're passing larger buildings. Whoop! It, uh, I don't know why, but it doesn't like to clip through objects. So you can be driving along and you can drive past a telegraph pole and suddenly the camera will whip round and you'll be very disorientated. It's one of the only niggles I have about this game. Um, it could easily be solved with just a little bit of code just to, you know, put a clipping mod on the camera. Hey, maybe there's, now that I'm on PC, maybe that mod already exists. I do not know. I've never used, uh, this is my first foray into the, uh, into the PC version. So I don't know. Maybe that does exist. Anyway, let's have the old Hummer on a chain and let's take it back to camp. So the Hummer is a very um, utilitarian vehicle. It's a great little scout. It's got some good power behind it. It has a lot of upgrade options. 
Um, the only problem with it is that you've got to find most of the upgrade options. So when you first get it, it doesn't have race suspension, it doesn't have all wheel drive. Uh, I don't even think it has diff lock to start with either. So, you know, it's, it's a very capable vehicle once you get upgrades for it, but you've got to find those. And I believe they exist in Alaska here, all the upgrades for the Hummer. Uh, was it here that we could do a little shortcut? Yes, it was. So, uh, where my tire tracks are there. So I'm just going to cut through here. go do 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 through the snow Thicker snow here. Of course, when you've got a vehicle on tow like this, um, it means you can't actually use your winch to uh, to get you out of tricky spots. So the only way, if, if I got bogged down anywhere, the only way to get myself out would be to cut the Hummer loose, pull myself out, and then try and recover the Hummer again. But uh, so far, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, uh, so far the Hummer seems, the, the Khan seems to be doing quite a good job of just motoring through uh, every condition here that we have so far encountered. Why did I drive into this bog? <laughs> that was rather silly of me. I could have avoided that. I mean, we got through, but there's a there's a easy case of don't drive through the bog. It's not very good for you. All right. I'm just going to pause a minute just to see exactly where we are. Okay. So we're going to head back to the main road here. I'm going to detach the Hummer, grab this upgrade, come back, grab the Hummer, and carry on. Okay? And I think once we've got the Hummer back to base, we will probably uh, call it quits for this episode, at least, uh, and carry on in the next one, because I don't want to make these episodes too long. Um, Do let me know if you want longer episodes, by the way. I can I can easily play this game for hours at a time. So if you would if you would like to see a marathon, uh, let me know and I'll see what I can do. So we're back to the main road here. So I'm just gonna cut the carn loose and I'm gonna follow this little follow this little rocky path here around to where this upgrade is. There it is, just over there. Shouldn't be too difficult to pick up. Oh, that's a tree. I'm just gonna skirt around here. No, I'm not. I was thinking that's gonna be easier than trying to go through this little gap, but seemingly this little gap is probably gonna be easier than skirting around that tree. There we go. What was that? Ah, so that was some raised suspension for the Freightliner. That's actually quite good to have. The Freightliner, um, we probably won't get it until a bit later on in the game, but the Freightliner is one of those really good all-round workhorses. It's kind of like the Fleet Star, um, in that it can have, like, you know, a, a sideboard bed, a crane, and also tow a trailer, um, which is an excellent combo, of, as I've already mentioned. Uh, and the Freightliner is just a more powerful version of that, which is excellent, because I do love me some extra upgrade 
powerful things. Really good, you know? So, when we get this Hummer back to... Mm. Winch, what you doing? Attach the back of my truck, not the side. So we're gonna head this back to base. Actually, before we do that, I'm just going to cut the Hummer loose one more time and just head up the road here because I'm pretty sure there is another blockage that we need to take care of just up this road. Um, and I can't remember what we actually need in order to clear it out of the way. Ah yes, here it is. So I think it's service spare parts, but I'm not sure. So let's just have a, a little look at what that rock obstacles, metal beams. So we'll have to find some metal beams somewhere. Now I can't remember, I think we can get those from down here at the harbour. But I know uh, there might be somewhere else we can get them. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. But for now we're just going to swing this back around. Go grab the Hummer and finish off this episode. Yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll show you the Hummer in the garage as well, just give you an idea of what's available for it and what it already has before we sign off. So, let's go. Hi, little fleet star. Coming through, don't mind me. Ooh. It's getting a little squirrely on me. actually see the Hummers powering itself through here as well as me. Um, if you're towing a vehicle and it has fuel in it, that vehicle's engine will run and um, help to pull itself through as you're pulling it, um, which means you can, it, you, you can easily attach a couple of trucks together and take them places as a pair and you know you can do a lot more with uh, with two trucks than you can with one sometimes, so it's a, it's a handy little extra thing. Boom! Right, I'm just going to stop the engine here and jump on over to the Hummer and we're going to move to the garage. So, this is the Hummer. As you can see, can't upgrade the engine at the moment or the gearbox all that, I think these are all in Alaska. Yes, that's in Alaska. Um, now the Hummer does have access to some different tires from the start. Uh, it actually comes with these Hummer H2 tires, uh, which are pretty good, you know, for a starting set of tires, excellent, excellent, good. Um, you know, better than most of the tires that you can get. Uh, so it's usually worth keeping those on uh, initially. Uh, alternatively, if you want something with a little bit more tread, you can go for these ones. Uh, slightly smaller tyres by an inch, but they've got quite a good tread to them. What we really want is we want to wait until we've got these at level 7 really. So, we're going to stick uh, an autonomous winch on the Hummer, 
so that if we roll, we're not going to be uh, stuck. Uh, and yes, it doesn't have diff lock as I suspected. Uh, and we're going to put a little snorkel on it. Uh, and we're going to add these on as well, which gives us a good bit of extra fuel and some repair parts should we need to uh, stock up in the, uh, in the field. Now, you'll notice here that all of the, the Hummer's uh, colour schemes are two-tone, to a degree anyway. Uh, and then you've got the extra two-tone ones. I, I tend to like this yellow and black, maybe the orange or the red. I'm not sure. I'm going to go with that one for now. If you guys would like to see other any other kinds of colour schemes, do let me know. Uh, so... I think that's all we need to do for the time being. Yeah, so that's, so I've got our full array of scout vehicles here. Oh. Oh. Shoulders aching a little bit. Uh, that we uh, upgraded in the last video here. So we'll give them a try out as well at some point. But we now also have the Hummer, so we can uh, we can do quite a bit with all of this stuff whilst we're here in Alaska. So what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, I want to switch back to the Fleet Star for a moment, and quickly for the next video, we're just going to see where we can get these metal beams from. And there's a factory here, and there's a factory here. So, as you can see, the easiest way to get to the factory is actually to go around that road and then along this road here. Uh, the problem with that is we can't get to this road because we need the metal beams to unblock this. So the only other way is to take this route here. And I'm not sure if the Fleet Star can manage that particular road yet because it is um, quite snowy, so we may not be able to to do much much else for the time being uh, on Alaska here. Um, but we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to wrap up this video here, and uh, I will see you in the next go next one, guys. Until next time, stay safe.